Hello, Tomok YouTube here with a video on Dvorak. In this video, we'll talk about what it is, how hard it is to switch, and my experience switching to Dvorak. I overlaid some gameplay as this video is mostly audio, but I'll tell you when you need to come back to see those visuals. First, let's start out with the asking the question, what is Dvorak? Dvorak is an alternate layout with the most common letters close together and for the most part on the home row. You have vowels on the left, constants on the right, and I have a picture up on the screen. When we compare this to QWERTY, we find that all the letters, common letters, are spread out from each other. This is, is because QWERTY was designed during the time of the typewriter, and it, spreading out the commonly used letters prevented jams. But this isn't a problem on modern keyboards, so it's more efficient to switch back to having all the common letters close together. Next, we ask the question, why switch to Dvorak? It has the potential for faster speeds and it's more ergonomic due to less hand movement. It also allows for someone with incorrect typing to learn again and learn correct form on Dvorak. And then here's a chart from the typingcat.com, picture on screen now, that shows the advantages of Dvorak when compared to QWERTY, as well as a few other keyboard layouts that I won't be talking about in this video. And when I talk about correct typing format, I'm saying that you use all your fingers when you type, hitting the correct keys, and you come back to the home row after hitting each character. Then we ask the question, how hard it is to switch? Many people think switching to Dvorak will take a very long time, often thinking a year or two to match your previous QWERTY speed. But within two months, I matched my speed of about 70 words per minute in, in QWERTY. Now my journey started out slow. The first two weeks was painfully slow. I used QWERTY during the day because I had a few essays that I was typing at the time and I could not be slowed down that much by Dvorak. So those first two weeks I maxed out at about 16 words per minute. I was only practicing 30 minutes a day. And after that I decided to switch to Dvorak full time and within a week of full time Dvorak I went from 16 to more respectable 30. So by that third week I was at 30 words per minute and knew the location of the most common letters. Then within a month, on that fourth week, I could type comfortably and knew all the characters and could type about 50. And right now, this is about my third month of being on Dvorak, I can type about 90 and I'm still climbing. So I hope to hit 100. Next, let's talk about should you switch to Dvorak. If you have wrist or finger pain, I would say Dvorak is an absolute must. It will really help to relieve that pain. And if you desire faster typing, Dvorak should also be able to get you that. And then you also have to ask yourself a few questions. Is the downsides of Dvorak worth it for you? Some of the downsides include change locations and shortcuts, and having to switch the layout of every computer you use. And every time you play a game, you have to switch back to QWERTY. If the positives of Dvorak outweigh the drawbacks for you, we need to talk about how you need to learn Dvorak. The typingcat.com is the best site I have found to learn Dvorak. And it has great lessons. While there's not that many of them, you can repeat them and get a lot out of them. And they also have great typing tests to monitor how you're doing. I'd also recommend downloading a Dvorak keyboard on your phone to start learning. I use Minium. I'll link my keyboard I use on my phone in the description as well as thetypingcat.com. And the best way to learn is to just use on-screen keyboards to refer to where the locations of the letter is. Do not rearrange your physical keys because it will give you the temptation to look down and you don't want to get into that habit. You also want to know where your home row is with those little notches on F and J so you don't want to move those. And just open a tab in Chrome and Google a Dvorak keyboard and have an image there so you can refer to it if necessary. And I would recommend switching Dvorak full-time within three weeks and while it may be hard and difficult, do not give up because this is the hardest part. If you use it frequently enough, you should be able to get to 30 words per minute within a week or two. And once you hit that, you'll just keep on growing exponentially in your speed. In conclusion, Dvorak is a great way to become a more proficient and comfortable typer, and it's not as hard to switch as many think. Learning Dvorak gives a great sense of accomplishment and I feel as though it's completely worth it for me and many others feel the same way. Overall, switching to Dvorak is a life-changing experience that most only get upset that they didn't switch sooner. Thanks for tuning into my channel and watching this video. Go ahead and leave a like on the video and subscribe for more tech-related content. I release videos weekly on a Saturday. 
and leave a comment down below if you have any comments or questions regarding the video as I will try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.